Rachel. And I'm Lynn and we're here from the Chattanooga Public Library and we're here to talk about weather because I love weather and I'm hoping maybe Rachel you have some information that might help me learn more about the thing I love so much, more weather. Oh boy do I. We've got some crafts today to make some of your very own weather measuring implements. We're going to make a thermometer which measures temperature. We're going to make a barometer which measures air pressure and we'll get a little bit more into the science of those later. Okay so we're back with our supplies. The things you're going to need to build your DIY thermometer are going to be a skinny clear glass bottle or plastic soda bottle just as long as it's clear. You'll need a straw. Ours are colored. Clear is ideal but these will still work. Um, you need some rubbing alcohol, so make sure you ask a parental unit for permission. And you will also need some food coloring and just a little bit of modeling clay here. For your DIY barometer, all you're going to need are two more glass jars, one bottle with a skinny neck and one jar with a wide neck. You're going to need water, food coloring again, and a rubber band and that's it but you will be amazed at what we can do with just these simple supplies okay so we're going to start with our thermometer first this is going to be one of your tall skinny mouthed uh, glass bottles so what we're going to do first is we're actually going to measure out a fourth of a cup of water and you also are going to need to add a fourth of a cup of rubbing alcohol so we're going to measure that out as well. And then you will add whatever drip drops of food coloring that you like. I'm going to do, I'm um, aiming for kind of a teal. We are going to pour this into your glass jar, hopefully not spilling any of it. So next step, we're gonna take our straw. We are going to put it in the thermometer all the way, but not quite touching the bottom. Most and touch the sides of the bottle? Yes. And then we're going to take our modeling clay and seal it over the neck of the bottle so that the straw stays suspended in. Okay our thermometer juice. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so in like real thermometers, it is not typically water and rubbing alcohol that make the thermometer juice. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that it is typically mercury, like so the, like the old school glass thermometers to like check if you have a temperature when you're sick. Oh, yeah. Those are full of mercury, which is, you know, poisonous. So we don't be breaking it to like look at it and see what's in there. <laughs> I also learned that the first whoop, thermometers that look like what we would expect a thermometer to look like, they were invented by um, the Italian physician Santorio uh, in 1612. And I'm assuming since he was a physician that he was doing it for body temperature. Didn't say that, but like, I'm guessing. So that's kind of cool that it's related to health as much as it is to weather in terms of its history. Oh, that is awesome. I would have assumed they invented it for weather first. I know. Well, but it was the other way around. So I've noticed a difference in mine and yours already, if that's all right for me to like point out. My straw barely came out the top of my bottle. So it is like kind of surrounded it's not covered. I didn't cover my straw hole. Okay. But is that too short? Do I need to raise up my thermometer more? I mean, my. Yeah, you might need to add a little bit more. As long as it's an equal amount of water to rubbing alcohol, it's okay to add more than just a fourth of a cup and a fourth of a cup. Like I said, it'll depend on the size of the bottle you use. Oh, I have an expandable neck straw, so I can make it stick out more. Does. The straw need to stick out? Yes, it does need to stick out of the top a little bit. It doesn't have to be as high as mine is here, but 
And how tight does the... Ideally, it just needs to not move or be jostled all that much. We're just kind of, we're trying to make it airtight. Well, not completely airtight, because obviously the, um, the hole of the straw is still open. Yeah. But... And um, I've got a little clay inside the top of my straw. Is that going to mess it up? I don't think so. Okay. So, so my straw sticks out just that much. It's not as tall as your straw. Yep, that'll do it. It's almost to the bottom. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Guess what? It's done. That's it. Oh, wait. Yep. Okay. So here's my question, because in my research on how thermometers work, the um, temperature, it says when the temperature around the tube gets colder, it causes the alcohol to contract or oh, like, contract. If it gets warmer, it causes it to expand. So would that be, the way we would tell that would be that it's going to go up or down the, mm -hmm. the, the straw? Just okay. like the fashion thermometer, if it's, you can already see mine is doing it. I don't know if you can. I can see yours is. Mine is not yet. So I'm wondering if it's because mine doesn't have enough sticking out the top. Maybe, but mine only just after it's, mine's been sitting a little bit longer than yours. Okay. So it just have been the liquid. You can see that my liquid has already moved higher in the straw. And if I were to put this somewhere like, say, the fridge, you would see the liquid levels go down, which means, okay. it, as you said, contracting, and that means it's colder. And if I were to set this outside on my porch, I'm betting that liquid would go up even more. One other little fact that I learned in my research was that the modern thermometer that we would understand to work on this kind of science was invented by Daniel Fahrenheit in 1709. And I bet that name sounds familiar, Fahrenheit, because that's how we measure that's the degree system that we use when we say it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Because there's another system that other places in the world use and other science and fields of science use that is called Celsius. And the biggest difference is where you start counting where zero is. So in Celsius, it's zero which equals 32 degrees in Fahrenheit, because math is interesting. Okay, so we're done with that. That's all we have to do? Done, yeah. And now you, class, you get to experiment. So like I said, so, put it in different places around your house or outside, and you could even double check if you have a, like a weather app on your phone or even did you, fridges have, sometimes have internal temperatures. So you could even double check and mark on the outside of your glass bottle with like a Sharpie, like what those temperatures are. And you will have a really good way of predicting the temperature of your thermometer surroundings. So yeah. there you go. I have another experiment that I'm going to run too, and to see whether or not sunlight because sunlight can create heat right so if I put it in a sunnier spot is it going to register higher than if it's in a shady spot so that's going to be the other experiment that I run. Now that we have an awesome DIY tool to help us measure temperature let's talk a little bit more about the science. Temperature is simply a measure of energy present. The heating and cooling of the atmosphere cause currents as cold air moves towards warmer air. Each day the air goes through a cycle of heating and cooling. In the morning hours, the sun rises and increases solar ray intensity. This makes the air warm up. Then, after peaking around noon, the sun begins to set and thus begins to decrease its solar ray intensity. This makes the air cool down. The air continues to cool after the sun has set due to the transfer of energy from the ground to the air. As the night progresses, the air continues to cool until it reaches its minimum just before the sunrise. Then the cycle begins again. The most basic thing to understand is that warm air wants to rise while cold air wants to sink. Hot air contains fewer molecules per cubic meter while cold air contains more. Hence, the warm air will rise up over the cold air. The actual variability of how warm or cold the air gets depends on many factors. The greatest factor in determining the air temperature is the amount of solar radiation that reaches the surface. That is, the input of the energy from the sun and the output of energy from the surface. This is determined by the amount of daylight hours and the intensity of solar radiation, both of which vary according to the season. In addition to this, there are four main controls which cause variation in air temperature. 
latitude, land and water, ocean currents, and elevation. Weather forecasters must consider these variations as well as the amount of solar radiation that reaches the Earth's surface when they make their probability distributions, which are based in part on human judgment. However, weather forecasters also use satellites and supercomputers. Meteorological satellites originated in the 1960s, and since then a considerable amount of research has been directed towards the design of space-borne meteorological sensors. Supercomputers have become more and more powerful in recent years, and also have contributed to improving weather forecasting. With these computers, which use satellites, it is possible to run prediction models with increasing finer resolution. In other words, if supercomputers continue to improve, weather prediction accuracy will also continue to improve. Alright, there's your science of the day!